All right, so this is a bit of a follow-up on the video I posted about things that you should look out for and uh, things that you should consider before buying a supercharger. I'll have the link up here in the top right. Not too long after posting that video, I actually got in contact with Active Auto Work and talked to a guy named Craig. He's kind of their guru at Active Auto Work for their supercharger kits. Uh, I think he's actually one of the ones that helps install them when you actually take your car there. And we went over some things that I was fighting and one of the things that he asked me about was my altitude. The reason he asked me that is because a lot of these cars that are 5,000 feet and up in altitude, they actually run a different pulley. It's actually pretty rare to the point where they don't even know what serpentine belt that I really should be using. So they gave me a couple different numbers of uh, uh, some sizes on serpentine belts to use. But we're gonna be replacing the pulley. My altitude is 4,700 feet. And I know that uh, the, the cars that they're talking about are like 5,000 feet and up. So I'm like right there, right below 5,000 feet. So we're thinking that that's why the car is actually running rich. So today we're gonna to be replacing the pulley. I've got some serpentine belts to try out a couple different sizes that uh, to see if they fit, which one fits best. I'm actually probably what we're gonna be doing is going into the car uh, as it sits right now and measuring where the tensioner sits or marking it and then putting one of the other serpentine belts on after I get the pulley replaced and see which one actually fits closest to the way it's sitting right now. So let's get the new pulley unboxed. This should be a pretty easy process and then we'll go take it for a little drive. So it really didn't come with much. This is a new bolt, I'm assuming, for the pulley there. And then there's a sticker. This little sticker just kind of goes over top of it like that to make it look a little nicer. If I ever go back and forth between this pulley and the other one, like if I were to take my car closer to sea level, um, I would be pulling this sticker on and off. So I might not put that on there for right now. And then it also comes with instructions. So I'm gonna make sure to read through this really carefully so that I'm not messing anything up. Uh, it says not to use air tools. So I'm gonna follow this step by step. Looks like it, uh, you grab an old belt and you wrap around. So it looks like what we're gonna be doing is taking an old belt, wrapping around it so that we can actually loosen this center bolt on the one that's on it right now. And then I think that's probably how you tighten this one back up is you put another belt around it and hold on to it uh, with some uh, channel locks or something so that you can uh, tighten it up without this spinning. So let's go pull out the electric fan and loosen the serpentine belt that's on the car now. So this looks like a bit of a mess, but basically what I did was I put a rag over the belt and then I got my vice grips and grabbed the belt. And then I was using this wood handle from this brush. So what I actually ended up doing was wedging this brush down in between those two pulleys. There's one right below the supercharger pulley, uh, the idler pulley. So I ended up wedging it down below there and then being able to loosen it. I slipped an eight millimeter socket over it with this handle on it. Now in the instructions, it tells me to torque it to 37, but this was well over 37. I was pushing it with like half my body weight to get that to come off. So when I put the new one on, I'm a little bit nervous about 37 not being tight enough, but I'm gonna do exactly what the instruction tells me to do. So here's the two pulleys together. Obviously this is the bigger one that we just removed. This is an 85 millimeter and this is a 70 millimeter. So if you don't know how gearing works, you'll probably have to look it up. I understand it, but I don't know how to explain it very well. Basically the smaller pulley is going to spin a lot more uh, for every rotation of the serpentine belt. So that's gonna spin it more in the same amount of time as this one was spinning. So this will spin faster and will give me more boost. This is supposed to be worth about three PSI. Now let's get it on the car, test those belts and take the car for a ride.
All right, so a little bit of a setback. I got the car running and you can't really see very well, but these belts are touching right there because this tensioner is not pulled back enough, meaning that this belt isn't small enough. It is too big, meaning that the other belt that I have that's even bigger would be worse. So I'm heading back to O'Reilly. I will keep you guys updated as soon as I figure out which belt it's gonna be. All right, so my belt situation has been a little bit complicated. I eventually went to this size right here. This whole thing's been a little bit of a cluster trying to get the belt right, but this is the final size. It looks closest to what the belt was running beforehand. So we're gonna finally take this thing out for a drive and see if the boost is any more and how much different the car actually feels. So hopefully the camera isn't too shaky. Um, I haven't looked into any different camera equipment yet. I've been too busy and uh, spending too much money on the, uh, on the car. Um, actually, if you guys have any suggestions on what camera equipment I should be using for this kind of stuff mounted, um, like the GoPros and stuff like that, is that the best? If anybody has any experience with any of that, it'd be awesome if you'd uh, leave your suggestions in the comments below. But anyways, I'm gonna go over the car real quick. Um, I don't wanna have you guys on this shaky camera too long, make everybody sick watching it. It does, it runs better. Um, I used to sit at stoplights and it would sit there and kind of have a little bit of a hard time idling. It would kind of like dip. Just just right off the bat, the throttle is more is smoother. And I, I really honestly think that that was just because it was just not quite running right at this altitude. One other thing I want to point out is it actually did change the sound of the supercharger. It, it has more of a blow off sound to it. So I'll get on it and it goes Psh! Instead of before, it just sounded like a, it just sounded kind of more like gradual. It might kind of go shh. It almost has like a little turbo bounce sound to it a little bit. It goes shh kind of thing. Those are my awesome turbo noises, by the way. So anybody who's looking at doing their AC delete, uh, pulling out their heater core and stuff like that for a weight reduction, you want to make sure that you're completely committed to it because it really, it really changes your driving experience. Um, not only the weight reduction, but it actually makes it a little bit more difficult to be in the car um, especially on a hot day like this. And I'm in Idaho, so it's a dry heat. It's not even, there's not even any humidity. So that was a pretty big success. I think that's probably the fastest uh, modification I've ever done that actually added that much horsepower. The majority of what I'm feeling is actually the car running a little bit better and being a little bit more responsive. As funny as that sounds, horsepower doesn't really mean that much if it's not easily accessed or smooth. You'll get a lot of professional race car drivers that basically will tell you, you can have all the horsepower in the world, but if you're not smooth with your driving, then, you're, you basically can't drive your car. What does it matter? You can't go fast anyways if you're being really rough with it. And the fact that the power delivery is even more smooth than it was before, I already thought it was as linear as it was gonna get. And now on the bottom end, it doesn't feel as boggy almost. It, it, it feels a little bit more responsive, revs faster. Um, one thing I did notice is it does get a little bit hotter than it used to. I was feeling the intercooler and the intercooler used to be basically the first like six or seven inches were, were warm and the rest of it was just normal temperature. But now it's probably like half the intercooler is warm. Now I know today was a pretty hot day, so that might have something to do with it, but I did notice it was just overall, everything was running just a little bit warmer. So huge shout out to Active Auto Work before I take off. They were super awesome. I was on the phone with them for like two and a half hours the other day, just talking about absolutely everything that we could think of why the car wasn't quite running just right they stayed on the phone with me as long as it took to get this figured out pulley came really quick they shipped it immediately just a really awesome company thanks again and thanks everybody for watching and we'll catch you in the next video